Hi friends, welcome back to ARC Tutorials and we are continuing with our JavaScript Top 100 Interview Question and Answers. This is part 2 of the same. If you have not checked out the first part, I request you to kindly do so. Also, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up to keep encouraging and supporting me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel where I am bringing you lot many more tutorials and interview question and answers to help you crack your interviews. Let's get started with top 100 interview question and answers part 2 on JavaScript. The first question is how can we change the font size from JavaScript? So to change the any style attribute in JavaScript through JavaScript, we'll write document.getElementById.style.attribute. In this case, since we are changing font size, we are using dot font size. So remember, this is camel case, so there is a mistake here. It should be font capital S and size. I want you to try it out. Let me know how it goes. How can we read and write file in JavaScript? So to read and write files in JavaScript, we can always use ActiveX objects or alternatively, we'll have to use some kind of a JavaScript plugin. Natively, JavaScript will not support uh, the file writing directly or reading. Now, how to convert strings to integer in JavaScript? So, if you want to convert a string into an integer, we will have to use a method which says parse int. We will use parse int method to convert string into integer. What are the different looping structures available in JavaScript? So different looping structures that are available in JavaScript are for loop, while loop, and do while. These are, these are just exactly same like you would be familiar from any programming language. How can we detect the operating system version of the machine using JavaScript? So here the interviewer is trying to ask if you have used any type of uh, kind of experience in using the system's uh, details. So to so there is a method, there is an object called navigator, which will have all the information about the system you are using. For example, you can check app version, you can check the app name, so whichever is the browser and the machine details. So we in this case we will use navigator dot app version. List out some of the ways that you can take input from the user. So some of the, uh, I would say, pop-up boxes that are uh, available in JavaScript are prompt, confirm, and alert. So these are the three different types of uh, boxes that you can use with uh, interaction with the user. What is the default data type of JavaScript? So by default, all variables are of type object. So we can we can define custom one also, but here by default all variables are object. Do JavaScript have concept of level scope? No, JavaScript does not have concept of level scope. Which are the two basic data types in JavaScript? So there are two basic types of data types. One is primary, composite, and the, there can be others which are special, but there are two primary. There are two uh, types. One is composite, one is special. Which all data types comes under primary data type? So in the previous example, we told you there are two main types of data types, primary and um, customized one, right, which is special. So we'll have numbers, Boolean string, which all are primary data types. And which then there is composite data types, which is nothing but special, or we can also call it as object and array. So these comes under the composite data types. So why to use inner HTML in JavaScript? So inner HTML is used to replace the contents of a particular element dynamically. So if you want to replace any contents, uh, content inside any element, we can use inner HTML. So we can write document dot get element by ID and then dot inner HTML equal to test HTML. So this way the latest content will be reflecting, which is 
test HTML. What are the disadvantages of inner HTML in JavaScript? So we should not use inner HTML if we can avoid as much as possible because there are some disadvantages. Some of the disadvantages are content will be replaced in all the places. And also it does not provide any kind of validation. You will have some cross site issues in terms of security. So it's good practice not to use inner HTML. What is break keyword in JavaScript? So break keyword is used to exit the loop on errors or some on some based on some conditions. For example, if you have some conditions and you want to come out of that particular loop, we will use break keyword. So if you use it inside the loop, so you can use it inside for loop, while loop or do while loop. And when you use break, you will come out of the loop. What is continue keyword in JavaScript? So continue keyword is nothing but inside a loop based on certain condition. You don't want to do anything, but you want to continue the loop. So that's where we will use continue keyword. All right, so that brings us to the end of part two question and answer series. Up next is part three JavaScript full tutorial series top 100 interview question and answers. I'm sure you're following it. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. If you haven't checked out the first part, please do so. So we continue the series in the next part and part three will be the final part where we cover the remaining question and answers. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next part.